Hello and welcome to the Battle Wagon. I'm back with another Star Wars Unlimited video, this time for part three of my series on turn one plays. I originally intended this video to be quite different, where I was looking at some of the initiative aspects. However, I found myself really interested in an aspect of the US 5K tournament, specifically the top 16, that no one has actually ever uh, uncovered from what I've seen or looked into. So in this uh, evaluation, which is completely unscripted and kind of just going to be some thought processes as I go. I wanted to group these top 16 decks into archetypes. So Leia and Sabine early, Boba Han mid, Krennic, Luke, Palpatine, and Vader into late lists. And as a general rule, early beats late, late beats mid, mid beats early. And that seems to be kind of the results that we're seeing uh, throughout the United States quite a bit in some of this. So um, just to clump them into groups, it doesn't necessarily mean they all follow that uh, kind of archetype thing. So uh, let's just go ahead and throw some of the information into some spreadsheets here. And uh, I ordered them by just each unit with their deck archetype, turn, quantity, and then arena. So all we're going to do is turn this into a pivot table real quickly and kind of see what we can get going. So we're definitely more interested in the name of the unit. Uh, the turn, we'll turn that into a filter. Type of deck will also be a filter. Quantity, we definitely want to see those values coming up. And then Arena, we'll throw that into some columns. So when we take a look at this from kind of a grand standpoint, we are definitely interested in the sum of the quantity of all of these. Uh, I don't know if that's stuck fully. Weird. Let's get rid of that. There we go, success. Now we want to grab this into uh, just, just a recommended chart is fine. Uh, something that we can see the data in uh, a large point. Uh, let's go ahead and add the arena. So orange is going to be space and blue is going to be the ground. So here we have wing leaders being the most plentiful, red three, super laser tech, fleet lieutenants, viper probes, all stuck up here surprisingly pretty high. So the things we want to know are what are late decks using, what are early decks using, what are mid decks using. So let's go ahead and we'll just start with um, conglomerate of all of the, we'll go early decks first. Okay, so early decks are using uh, a lot of space here in the very beginning, uh, first two turns, things like that. But let's kind of break that down and pull off turn one from this and see what kind of split we have. So our chart's a little big. I think we're losing some of the info over here. So it's a 28 to 53 split. So 40% space. I don't know what that would be actually. Um, let's get a calculator out. All right, so 28 out of 81, so we're looking at 34.5%, 34.6% are going to be space units on turn one. So well, one out of three, that's that's kind of an interesting statistic uh, to be looking at. So of, of starts, like sure you could have starts where you're going to have both options available, but you're more likely going to have the ground option available on your turn one play for two cost as it is. So this is going to be your early plays so you're definitely gonna be able to have to deal with those green squadron a wings and alliance x wings sabine is interestingly more plentiful than the marine uh, and, and interesting that's because of the yellow sabine list that was present also interestingly enough this sabine does a lot better into things like the crafty smuggler than a marine does because sabine will kill it in one hit things like that uh, so does the Rebel Pathfinder, which we see. So we do see a little bit of specking towards things that are meta that are going to have that shield. Both of those kill uh, Luke's uh, Alliance uh, Dispatcher, things like that. Let's check out the um, turn two place. So again, we are still in the aggressive uh, fast decks, and we see about a 50-50 split closer in space versus uh, ground units here. And, and what that kind of says is they do have the option to switch arenas pretty quickly or continue on an arena if it is favorable for them. So you, if you lose the momentum against an aggro deck, you, you kind of have that capability to switch arenas and things like that. 
All right, let's go into some of the mid decks and just peek at some of the same information. So we are interested in overall, what is their split? Oh, they're going to be 26 divided by 56. I don't know why my calculator takes twice to come up. 26 divided by uh, not 56, because we want the full number. 82, uh, 32%. So very similar uh, loadout on what to expect. Uh, one third being space, one third being ground. And here we see Greedo, Super Laser Tech, Boba Fett, lots of strong three drops. Um, cartel spacers were used much less than I expected from what I'm seeing in a lot of the Boba decks and things like that. Uh, probe droids, a uh, portion of those are here and things like that. So let's narrow that down to turn one plays and we're looking at Greedo, Crafty Smuggler, infrequent spacers, Viper probes, and then uh, Han using the C-3PO, R2-D2, and Leia's. Uh, Leia's more of a utility because you can get Leia and R2 out or um, save Leia for later on, things like that. But against a mid-range deck you can expect to see fewer space units um, so if you are the aggro deck uh, you might have that opportunity to to switch and go for the space arena more frequently okay uh, mid decks turn two again super laser techs boba's seventh fleet strong stuff going on here um, falcon star for wing leader so lots of space 50-50 split, but you do have the Fleet Lieutenants, Ezra, and, and things like that. Um, not, not a whole lot of surprising stuff going on there, but let's check the mid. Because uh, I think there's some interesting stats going on here. Viper Probe Dreads being really prevalent. So I'll go back to that at the end, I think. But Viper Probe Dreads being prevalent in late game decks is very interesting because they have the capability to trade with a lot of those three health turn one drops so uh, again we'll come back to that inferno four is pretty resilient it doesn't trade well with anything but it just gets on the board helps you scry and kind of curate your deck death star st stormtroopers um, just a lot of the stuff you'd kind of expect uh, so let's go down to first turn again viper probes inferno four death star stormtroopers and then you have just the few things from um the like blue green that had made it and stuff like that so as for a late game blue green seems to be the only one uh, that we might be able to classify it, that as but quite a few probe droids let's check turn two super laser techs death star stormtroopers cell guards a lot more cell block guards used than i expected considering that again they died any of the three twos um there's uh, just a few Royal Guards, the one Palpatine list and things like that. More Fleet Lieutenants. Um, lots of fun stuff there. All right, so let's go back and take a look at some of the overall data for just turn one on all of the lists. Okay, um, and I am not actually interested in the arena. Let's start with the ground. So Viper Probe Droids die to virtually everything on this list except R2-D2 and C-3PO. But everything else kills them except the utility stuff. So it's kind of surprising that it's here. But on the counterpoint, that's the late decks, which are trying to trade units early and get units off the board. So the Viper Probe Droid kills all of the stuff. So that's kind of what you'd actually expect to see late game units using. So if you are up against late game units, I actually feel like, or late game decks, I feel like the stocks on Crafty Smuggler go up slightly, even though there are only eight used. Um, but Crafty Smuggler then in turn is countered by Sabine Wren and the Rebel Pathfinder. So you kind of have this paper, rock, scissors with the units in addition to the lists and how weather performing and things like that. Short Troopers are on here, but they kind of have more value when they are brought out using Darth Vader, things like that uh, let's check the turn one space units so green squadron a-ring and the alliance x-wing and inferno four are all of these have three health as a space unit and are very difficult to deal with unless you are going to use something like an ecl 
ECL your own A-wing if you are Sabine. Um, if you're going to use a pump on the X-wing or the ARC-170, like the fleet lieutenant, or even the wing leader would be one option. However, if you're going to use a wing leader, then they have an opportunity to respond with their own wing leader or even get that swing for five damage. So it's very important to have a, a turn one answer or an early answer to the capabilities of these light side heroism aggression decks that are, have arisen in the meta. And I think a lot of the time the successful decks are the ones that are going to have answers to that. So, for example, the one of the reasons the mid decks can beat the aggro decks, especially Boba, is because of the Seventh Fleet Defenders, the Consortium Star Vipers. They kill anything on this list, and Boba has access to ECL. Notably on that is also, if they do not do it as their first action, maybe even skipping their turn and doing it second turn and then play the Greedo with the resource that Boba has readied, then the Rebel player has a chance to use their own wing leader on them, which, if you recall correctly, there were numerous wing leaders being played. In fact, it was the most plentiful thing in the, the list. There's 21 of them played in all of the 16 decks. Red 3 was quite surprising to me. Um, I am not a huge fan of that one. This is my hot take. The, it is more of a win more card. If you already control the space arena, it's good. However, if you don't control the space arena and you're dropping it so that you can uh, be greedy and attack with your ground units that are the heroism, a lot of those ground units, as we saw in the previous chart, end up trading one for one. So your opponent has the opportunity to kill them and or they can just come through and kill the red three because it only has two attack and three health. I, I don't think it's as good as people claim it is. And I think um, some of the stocks on that one will go down a little bit. The Falcon is also interesting. It does appear in six uh, quantity, which is the two decks that it could appear in, um, Sabine and Han. So as a turn one Han play, it can actually kill any of the turn one drops from any of the aggressive decks which is definitely a factor that should be involved and and i think some of the han mid-range or han late game decks that have started appearing do really well against the the aggro decks and i think that's kind of you know, not entirely unexpected regarding the space units here i i did put out in my very first video in this series a an evaluation of all of the things as to why the two three space units are bad for the most part when it comes to trading with other um, units. So I think that's all I really have for today. I don't really have any other takeaways, but this is just kind of a thought process that I had gone through and wanted to share that with you in kind of an unscripted format. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day.